Welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Stagnant 11 show for the game between Republic of Ireland and Gibraltar, Euro 2020 qualifiers. And this is not the team that we are predicting. This is the team we would like to see start. And you might see a little bit of debate here and there uh, between myself and Pierre from footballfaithful.com. Um, but yeah, so I don't think there's any need for experimenting in goals. No. I think Darren is an absolute shoe in proving his worth again, once again. Uh, actually... If 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 anything, it's the uh, I wouldn't be throwing James Talbot or Sean McDermott, you know, unless something majorly no. happens. And it, at that, if something happens to Darren during the game, which never seems to be the case, but you know, touch wood, mm-hmm. uh, I I I would I would like to see Talbot play against Gibraltar at some point if he if he was to come on. But look, it's more of a novelty than anything yeah, else. It's yeah, just yeah. more of a of a of a nice gesture, yeah. other than you know, the real deal type thing. But uh, Darren, his save against Gibraltar, uh, away from home, you know, again, that was another, that, that the match winning save. Mm-hmm. It really was, because we only won one nil. Um, but he, that's why we need him in there. For those moments, in case something like that does happen, he's there, number one, fantastic keeper. And in the form of his life, he'd probably say himself. Mm-hmm. Um would you have any arguments? No, like I agree. There's a kind of sentimental part of me that would like to see Talbot given a run out, but I don't think when you have limited amount of substitutes and stuff, I don't think you should be. You know, yeah, I'd see him maybe get, exactly, also, yeah. yeah. So I think you stick with Randolph. I think, you know, footballers don't want to be given up the chance to to gain international caps. So there's I, a part. I think of, that's important as well, which we'll get to in a few minutes as well. But sorry, go on. Yeah, I think that there's a part like you'd like to see a bit of experimentation because. You know, it is Gibraltar, but um, I think he'll probably go with a quite settled side, if if um, if I'm honest. And that that's not a bad thing in, in the long run throughout the group, but it would be good to see a couple of people come in. I, actually, I won't name them off because we'll be kind of ruin, ruining yeah, going yeah. through the team. So we'll, get, we'll get to it. Like, yeah. I, I think you keep, for, for me, you keep Ender Stevens there. Unless he, he looked like he took a knock when he collided with, I think it was Paulson at one point. He yeah. looked like he, he'd taken a knock. So if that is the case and he's carrying a knock, I'd play Cunningham, yeah. Premier League player. I know he just got relegated, but he's played Premier League. He'd be well able for mm-hmm. Gibraltar. Like, um, so I wouldn't be against Greg Cunningham playing. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'd love to see, you know, Stevens stick with him, consistency. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see him stay. He, he's really cemented that left back spot and again, doesn't look phased at international level in my opinion. Uh, done very well against Denmark. I thought, you know, tough challenge, tough game away, but he stuck to his guns and he was very, very good. You know, this fella playing League One not so long yeah, ago, you th- know. What I mean? There was one point that was very early on, I think it was about 10 minutes, and he was almost last man, and the ball dropped to him and, and he pinged a ball on the volley right out to the, I'm not sure if it went to Coleman or Brady, but it was a super pa- switch of play on the volley when he, when he was under pressure. Like that was the yeah. time he, a lot of players just couldn't have blamed him for just putting his foot through it yeah, aimlessly, yeah. you know, so sh- showed a bit of confidence, I thought, in the ranks. And I kind of noticed that I think um, Beglin said it in commentary that he'd taken a bit of a knock. Yeah. And I saw the next couple of times he got the ball, actually, he kind of gave it away, which was uncharacteristic to how he'd started the game in yeah. the first 15 minutes. But he regained his composure. And, you know, I think that was great experience from because Paulson is a good player, you know. And um, the only time Paulson really, Paulson influenced the game, had a great chance look dangerous but that was more when he cut inside off the wing you know so yeah no I think Ender Stevens has been a real positive so far yeah. so I'd leave him in there you know I think he's been he's been he's been great and mm. he's one, one of mix I know he, he started getting caps under O'Neill but it was a left back spot that was open to anyone you Derek Williams Stephen Ward um, and then you know Cunningham wasn't even getting lucky he was constantly called up to provisional squads and mm-hmm. then getting left out but I think Mick actually had you know, two play, two players for every position, which I thought was good. Like he had uh, centre halves, he had four centre backs, he had two left backs, he had two right backs. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, the two right backs are our two best players. But uh, I think yeah, the look, Ender Stevens is 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 bang on there. Um, centre halves, Duffy all day long. I, there's no you know agony again. We talk about best players. He, he probably is their best player because yeah. he's the most threatening. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very solid at the back. I mean, Brilliant blocks against Denmark, you know, solid. Mm-hmm. Obviously scored. Um, he won't look. He won't be looking to give up his place. You know, his future captain in my eyes. Um, if, if Coleman ever retires, I think next in line to be the captain would be Shane. I think mm-hmm. it'd be. I I just can't see anyone else being captain. But um, 
would you would you would you like to see Egan? I would in this game this now, one, yeah. if I'm honest, because I think I think Kyo did really well. Um, but I do think I think Kyo, thirty two years old, I think he'd be mature enough to to take a step back for this one as well. It wouldn't yeah. you know affect him. And I think it just for the likes of Egan, who's had a fantastic season and who's been in and around the squad, I just think it'd be nice, you know, kind of. I suppose almost cup game even when you think about the club game just give give him a run out let him feel, yeah. you know get let him because you never know if you know Kyo or, or or Shane Duffy could get injured throughout the, the rest of the group and you might want Egan to come in there so it'd be good to give him a few minutes with the rest of the back four yeah. you know so that's one I would like to see come in the game against Poland I thought he was really good but he's playing on back three it was, it was the only thing so where he can I'm sure and I'm sure he's he's good enough to adapt to a you know Back four, if he has, to. I'm sure he's played in back four. Yeah, so yeah, back three is more of a yeah. new modern thing, but uh, he plays in the center of that. Um, and he's a ball playing center half as well, so he's just solid enough, you know. Um, I personally, because I, I know the guy personally, I'd like to see him start. I think he deserves it. The season he's had, uh, he's got promoted with Sheffield United, he was there, you know, um, record signing at the start of the season. Went, he's gone there and had a plane of blinder, same as mm-hmm. Enda. But yeah, uh, the, okay. So we're in, in agreement then. So we've Stevens, Duffy, and Egan, mm-hmm. and then I'm, I'm gonna go Seamus Coleman again mm-hmm. right back. Um, look, he justified his, his place in the team against Denmark, and I I still can't understand people's frustration with him. He's done nothing wrong, uh, and people are just kind of as Matt Doherty says himself. Is, is sometimes your face just doesn't fit. I think people are starting. To think that about Seamus Coleman, which is bizarre because you look at uh, Seamus Coleman is, you know, very unlucky with that broken leg, yeah. and before that he never let the country down. Still hasn't, no, no. even since he's come back and he's had a poor dips of form. He said himself, and he's had good dips in form, but he's never let the country yeah. down. And you know, I think people are being very, very, very harsh mm-hmm. by saying drop him. I just don't get it. like I'll be yeah. I'm an Everton fan and I, lo- I love Seamus Coleman, but. You know, still, like I'm, I'm, I'm realistic about things. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't like seeing players left there to, you know, um, be tortured by fans. You know, mm-hmm. it happens at club level to a lot, a lot of players. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but internationally, we should be embracing players like Colin. Like, he's, he's playing probably the highest level in the last ten years uh, of any Irish player. Like yeah, just 100%. in regards, you know, mm-hmm. I'll be at Everton there. Very inconsistent, yeah, yeah, but yeah. him at that level, he's never, he's always remained mm-hmm. very, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Top pro captain, as you said on their um, final word show about his leadership, second to none on that yeah. team. Um, like it, it goes to show when someone like Roy Keane admires a player, yeah, like he loves Shams Cohen, mm-hmm. he loves him, like he, could, he, he couldn't have spoke any higher of him. He, he's a great captain as well he's a model pro he's the kind of you know he shows the dedication to his craft that a lot of young players should be looking up to I can understand to a certain extent why there's all this debate well it's very understandable the debate people are watching the Premier League and Matt doherty has been the standout Irish player yeah, of course. he's been one of the best right well he's playing as a wing back he's been one of the most imp- kind of real surprise slash breakthrough players in the Premier League season not just Irish you know so people are just going, oh, well, then he should be in the Ireland team. Now, Seamus Coleman's come back from a serious injury, a bit like Robbie Brady at the moment. Yeah. So it's what he's, t- uh, he's t- had games. Second ca- half of the season, I know he's getting a bit of stick off Everton fans first half of the season, but like you need to give a player time to, re- mm. to, to build up his match. I know, time, it's, it's, fans are very disloyal. They're very, yeah, you know, who's in form in the moment. Well, it should go to who's in form in the moment a little bit, but when you have a player who's that much of a servant to your country and who is such a top pro, you have to give them a bit of time when they've suffered such a bad injury. Yeah. But I thought he's come through. He's come through it now. Finished the season, you'll know better, better than most as an Everton fan. Finished the season really strongly. Very prominent in a couple of their big wins against top six clubs. Mm. So I think Clean it's... As well. And then I think he, because he's your your captain, it, it's, it's hard to leave him out of the team although you know I'd love to see Darty get a run because he does deserve yeah. it in but a that's way. not to a... say that Matt Darty for this one might not get a run ahead like yeah. I'm going to just say it now I'd like to see us play more of a 4-4-2 mm. and have Darty in front of Coleman for this one uh, that would be my my preference if we went 4-3-3 have him on the right hand side of the of Mc, probably McGoldrick <clears throat> that would be sorry about my voice late night Um, <laughs> that would be my preference of what have Darty, like I'm, I'm all for having the two of them in the team. Yeah. I think 
you should play your best players. Mm-hmm. You know, albeit it, it's Gibraltar, but you know we're at the Aviva. There's not going to be any mad storms or anything like that. You know, we know what we can do. I just just hope there's no complacency. That's not what we need. But uh, so I think we settled on thirty, and you know, ahead of Colm. we can. Yeah, I, I don't th- I don't think he no will. not in the lineup. I mean, just oh yeah. Well, I I said on the preview to the Denmark when I would have started him out in Denmark, but I don't yeah. think it's the right move to really play him in a game when we're going to be the instigators like against Gibraltar. Yeah, yeah. I think you go with a more naturally attack minded player in that case because I think it's it's quite a transition for a right back to go and just his body shape when he's receiving the ball changes yeah, yeah. and unless you're doing it a lot, I don't think it's the best move. I I'd probably. Um, if we kind of if we have the back four picked and we're going in that direction of the pitch, well, go we go four to, three three or four four two. I'd stick to the same formation. Okay. I kind of go so with four three three. Sorry. Or well, if you want, you no, know, no, if you no, want no, to, we'll, we'll go four three three. Um, That's fine. So, because what I was saying about Seamus Coleman, um, I think I would give Robbie Brady another hour because I think he's the player that is in desperate need of playing football. Okay. Um. Similar situation, just needs to play games, even though he's not going to be at his best, and he hasn't got that oh, club level. Perfect. A goal would really boost his confidence. Yeah. Whatever, I would only give Pounds. him an hour. Yeah, an hour even. I'd like to see Robinson get a run maybe later on, but I think we kind of need to play Robbie Brady back into form a little bit, right. and okay. this could be a good chance against lesser opposition to get the. I see what you're saying, but I think more so Brady needs more consistency more than anything. <laughs> Obviously, after this, he's going to go on a break now. Mm. Then he comes back into preseason. So it's a bit of a waste. In regards to what you're you're saying, and I'm not knocking what you're saying yeah, at yeah. all. I'm just saying <clears throat> what he, in my opinion, what he would need is consistency. I think, yeah, okay. I I'm not in, in any disagreement with you in regards to playing him. I think he could, but I would have him on the left. Um, I I just I just this is obviously just more of a fantasy eleven than anything else. <laughs> but I would like to have Doherty on the right hand side of whatever way we go. But if we're going four three three. Um, we'll go with the midfield and we'll come to the attack then after probably um, but I think I, I, I'd probably I'd drop Glenn Whelan for this one because we just don't think we need that mm. uh, defensive midfielder for this game I think we should be attacking in this game and I think uh, if we had three two centimetres and one number 10 I think I know Alan Judge broke his wrist but I'd probably have him in that number 10 position for this mm. one uh, but who are him definitely shoe in I thought Hendrick done really well again so I think those two have for me have to stay in there is it possible that Judge can play then? I don't know. Um, I imagine he can because McLean played with a cast. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. No, I just because it's so it's so quickly after it's literally only yeah. forty eight hours. Well, but I just thought that he, after. I thought he finished the game quite strongly. I think he'd be coming in there for the like, confidence. It's yeah, no, no. He scored at the Aviva against the USA. There's a lot of things there that you know it would give him the thumbs up. Yeah, in my no, opinion 100%. to to, to um, maybe get in there, but I think that that. That would also be a little bit exciting to have, you know, the three of them in there. And uh, obviously, the, I'd say probably Hendrick would probably actually be the number 10 if that's the case, mm-hmm. just because of the way he plays. But he's been brilliant under Mick, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, he has. Very very good. And um, he's been, He was very poor under O'Neill. Um, and I think he said that himself. Like, he just his performances were not reaching the levels of the, the Euros and so on. Yeah, no. And I think they kind of played him out of position a bit, didn't they? They were kind of trying to ask him to be a number 10 a bit, a bit as well. And, yeah. you know... I think it's again. It's kind of you're switching players sometimes at international level into positions they're not used to playing for their clubs. Um, I prefer Hendricks as a uh, Hendrick as a box to box man. If yeah, I'm yeah. honest. So you'd have Hurin and Hendrick then together. Yeah, I think if you want to play with the number ten system, then as well, I think you can mess it up. You could even bring, you could even gone fancy wise. You could even bring like an Odeoda in, in as, a, 10, as, yeah, as the number ten. Yeah, he's got all, he's got the skills skill set to to play it. You yeah. know, good good in the ball and. In uh, close areas, he's got a pass, you know, creative. Yeah. I, I, I it, would, think... it would make sense. The only reason I'm saying uh, George is because obviously he came on and affected yeah. again. I just don't think he'll be able to. I I don't think he'd probably play after. Yeah, if, yeah. You know, if it was a week in between the games, I think. But I like, hear you, yeah. you know, so. Okay, so we're assuming Alan George is injured. Uh, we'll probably go a doubt it then. Yeah, okay, that makes Why sense. Not? Yeah. Because I would like to get him in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. As I say, it's a fantasy. I've <laughs> tried to get as many good players as you can in that team. But I think if George is, is to be, to be de- I suppose, declared fit uh, enough to play, um, I would just have him based on the last 15 minutes he had against Denmark. I thought he was, he thought he was excellent. Yeah. He obviously create, created the goal, created the um, chance for the goal as well. So 
yeah, like he affected the game positively, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he'd be full of confidence. And as I say, he scored against USA as well, so he has broken his duck in that aspect. Um, but uh, if he's injured, we're gonna go out there. So you can let us know your thoughts on that in the comments. Um, so out left, who are we going for? I I I I'm dropping McLean for this one. Right. Um. And by the way. <laughs> People think I have a thing against James McLean. I don't. I don't. I just the players there. I just, just think are better, and would affect games more. That's just that's just my thing with McLean. Uh, I can't fault his heart, his desire, his passion, his love for the country. All that I absolutely love. He's Mister Ireland, and you know he gets abused all the time, and I've nothing but you know time for him. I think you know he gets a lot of unwarranted stick off people. Well, be it's English fans or whatever, mm. but uh, you you can't fault his uh his desire and heart for for the for the for the country for the badge for the shirt. You know what I mean? Every time he plays for Ireland, he goes up a level. But it just uh, just think the move to Stoke wasn't good for him, and he's not really kicked on. You know, I think West Brom was a good move for him. So he was mm. doing well at West Brom. Mm. He obviously left there. They got relegated. Um, I think so, uh, a move to Celtic I think if that was ever to be on the cards I think that would hamper his international um, career as well but look he's, 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 he's must be 30 now at this rate yeah I'm not sure about 29, 30 yeah, yeah, yeah so he's exactly. not uh, no spring chicken at this rate yeah, yeah. not that he's you know it doesn't yeah. look like he's losing any legs anytime soon but you know what I mean it's just I'd rather have someone like a Robbie Brady come in there he's just he's he's, he's He's yeah. more. He's he's clever. Uh, sorry, he's he's more. I don't think McLean's dumb. He's he's just more. More guile, probably. Yeah. No, not not as McLean's very direct. It's kind of open yeah. Up. You know what you're gonna get. Yeah, and I, I think last night was the perfect time to get him in because he is experienced in them big big games. Perfect time to to play him. Yeah. No, um, I wasn't in any way disheartened yeah, no. to see him playing there. So, I was like, okay, well, we know what we're gonna get from him. I'd I, I'd be happy enough, Robbie, going in from the left, um, because I think. Like I said a few minutes ago, I think he need, just needs to play some games. Um, yeah, and, I'm, uh, and the more I think about it, it makes sense. Yeah, no, let him let him build his confidence back up like that. And like I said, you know, I, I think we all know there's a smashing player in there with Brady. He just needs yeah. just needs uh, needs to a bit of build his his kind of match sharpness back up again. And uh, you know, hopefully he play. You know, we can do that a bit. But might get a goal his confidence and. Bunch up, uh, jump up and I'm, I'm hoping there's a lot of the players that they're the likes of you know even McGoldrick and we'll talk about the other side now I, I hope a couple of players can get a goal or two under their belt just to you know build their confidence for going ahead in the group yeah. so you know because we're not we can't rely on Shane Duffy headers forever you know yeah yeah so. totally no. Um, but centre forward boys I think we're gonna to have to go McGoldrick there because, as you say, you want to get see him maybe get a goal. Yeah. I love to see him get like a hat trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, brilliant for him, and I think fans are really starting to warm to McGoldrick, which is great. Uh, he deserves it. He's been a breath of fresh air since he came in. Um, yeah, he hasn't scored, but he's definitely affected games for us, and you know, kept the ball up in in the opposition's half where we needed it. Was actually letting players come forward rather than just going. Back and forth constantly, like what? What? What is the point? Um, it's just constantly being lumped up to nobody, uh, and then just coming straight back at us. At least when he is the ball, he brings other players into place where our midfielders can actually get forward and our wingers can get forward. Even if there's a big gap between them, you know, when the ball goes up originally, you know, I he put defenders under pressure, but when when the ball goes up originally, uh, previously we never used to see any of our players get past the halfway line because they're mm-hmm. so deep. Mm-hmm. But with McGoldrick, he allows the other players around him to get up in support. So like their Brady's and McLean's, even Hurrahan and Hendrick. They were, as you said, at one point in in the final word, you were talking about people getting in the box. Yeah. You're seeing the difference. There was like three or four players actually in the box. I think that is the thing with McGoldrick because he actually allows players to get forward too. And it's not like he's missing loads of chances or anything either. Like yeah. I think he had a chance against the chance against Georgia, but like he was. You know, he's too far away. He was running, right? yeah, he was running on fumes at that stage because he put in such a shift yeah, throughout the yeah, game. Yeah, you know, yeah. he knocked it by the keeper and almost collapsed, and it was almost funny because you could see, you know, you could see that he was just wrecked, really. So, mm. well, I think it um, showed with the ovation he got when he came yeah, off. Yeah, no, hundred percent, and like he didn't the appreciation. He, he didn't. He put in a massive shift last night without, you know, getting any real chances. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I I think everybody would love to see him break his stuff against Gibraltar, and it's the perfect game for it, really. Remember, Robbie used to fill his boots when he came up against teams like this, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So now's the time. It doesn't like, it doesn't matter when you look back in history, it's three goals for Ireland. Don't tell anybody yeah, who's come against Gibraltar, you know? So. This is, absolutely. Um, so I think we're in agreement in every position then, except for maybe a, a word right. Um, I just think Matt Doherty, he has, like... You can't pick an Ireland team unless you meet McCarthy um, without Matt Doherty, especially if it's like a, it's yeah. essentially it's what we want to see. It's not what yeah. is going to be there. You know, what we predict, or sorry, not predict, what we are looking for will be, I'm sure, totally different to meet McCarthy. Although we were quite close with the uh, starting 11 for Denmark. Yeah, not too far off. If you want to go complete fancy, you'd say like, Go three at the back and play Robbie Brady left wing back Matt Doherty right. It's not going to happen. You know. But where does that fit? Where does that fit James Coleman? Yeah, no, you must be dropping him. But I don't okay, think yeah. you know. I, I don't want James Coleman dropped. I don't that would suit John Egan as well though. Yeah, no, but I don't. You can't. I don't see the point in playing three centre backs against Gibraltar. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you could almost go three at the back against Gibraltar if if I'm perfectly honest. You know. Yeah. Um, three four three. Yeah, you could mm. be going along them lines. I'd probably throw... I'd like to see Robinson a bit more. I might throw him in there. Just another... Just kind of with the point of view of these are players... Do you know, at the moment, does the argument just actually pick the same team that's won against Georgia and got the result out in mm. Denmark? You couldn't argue if that was the case. The old yeah. cliche, don't change a winning team. But I'm just conscious just that... just a quick turnaround. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, and I'm conscious that there might be some of these players... You know, it's undou- It's very doubtful that we'd have be able to pick that same starting eleven throughout the whole campaign. So, it, you know, I'd be looking at this could be a good chance to give a couple of lads who are on the fringes a run out. Would it? Because you might need them later on. Yeah. You know, uh, you don't want them coming in cold <clears throat> as such. So, well, I think the way you were saying about um, Robbie Brady, um, I would give him sixty minutes. Yeah. And then I'd have Robinson on for, for the yeah. last half hour. That'd be my from the left cutting inside. I think he'd be very good there, or even. Coming on from a Goldrick, whatever way you look at it, he can play in a number of positions. Mm. Across, I'm pretty sure he can play against. He can play in all three positions there. If, it depends if if it's a if it's a high playing three, which I imagine against Gibraltar it will be. It was more Goldrick of a deep. would play in all three positions. Are you? Robinson. Robinson. Okay. Right. Yeah, he could play left, right, or center. I think um, he's got the legs for it. Anyway. Yeah. No. Um, and I think he did a similar shift. Uh, when we played Poland, he was up front with uh, Aidan O'Brien doing a lot of the donkey work and the running. You know, he's willing and able to do the run, and he's got a goal in him. Obviously, we've seen Preston. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do. I I would like to see Robinson uh, come on at some point, but I think if he did, I'd like to see him come out on the left after about an hour. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that they they'd be faded, Gibraltar. And I think it'd be a perfect opportunity for him to you know, break his duck at the Aviva. But what better place to do it? Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter who you score against. It's still a goal in the Aviva. Mm-hmm. That's why I was saying about George. Mm-hmm. He's already broken his duck. He's scored. He knows the feeling. It's a last minute winner. You know what I mean? And that was around the time for a very horrible time for Irish football. Uh, we very looked like we could score a goal. Mm-hmm. And Graham Burke scored in that game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, the right hand side. You want to go with. I'd probably go with Robinson, if I'm honest. Right. You're going to go with Doherty? Yeah. Well, I think that would be left up to the people in the comments <laughs> yeah, okay. to, to, to vote for that. So they're going to have like a slash. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to see Doherty get a run out. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? I see. I, I know I, what you mean. Because if I'm playing fullback for, myself, yeah. I know what you mean about yeah. your body shape. Because you're you're more focused on seeing the whole game exactly. uh, in front of you. Whereas you're stopping your turn back to look. And yeah. you're not really focused on... You know, it's the same same with Goldrick has the ball at centre back and he wants to play it in. Mm. You're, you're you're going from this to this and then yeah, you turn. Yeah, yeah. Whereas and plus, you, even, even when you're... You know, a lot of the kind of... Um, a lot of what he's done so impressively from uh, with Wolves this season in the Premier League is is playing from a wing wing back role, which is almost kind of an in between position between the right back and the right hand side of the yeah. attacker in a four four three. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a different different uh, kettle of fish almost. But um, yeah, really unlucky. I I'd I'd be tempted to to leave him on the bench, but I would. I think for the season he had everything he, he deserves. Recognition it is, reward, it is a cap. to to come on to come on at least for a last half hour or something, but I, I don't see them dropping the captain the leader of no. one of the leaders within the squad, you know. Mm. So, um, I wouldn't be upset if he played there. I just think yeah, yeah, maybe I Robinson will. If, when, like I said, when we're when we we need to go out and be the team, um, you know, going for the game, creating chances, yeah. the instigator, um, then I 
not sure if Doherty. I think it's more for big away games. I said it in the preview. Uh, I don't like my opinion. Yeah. I'm kind of just repeating yeah. myself to a certain so, extent. So, so you're you're against Doherty for, against for this it. one? I no, no, but against. like you, 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 you'd have. Who was it? You said Robinson ahead. I'd have Robinson probably. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It does make sense. He's a more natural attacker. But as you said, um, the season he's had, I just think it's, it, it's madness to to drop him. Mm. I think it's very, very, very unfortunate for him, uh, and everybody feels for him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But look, he'll be ready, and I'm sure when he gets the chance, he'll take his chance this time around. So uh, it'd be interesting to see. But that's been pretty much our starting eleven. So we've Randolph, um, Stevens, Egan, Duffy. Seamus Coleman, then we have a midfield three with uh, Hendrick, um, Hurahin, and if George is injured, it's Odell, Odell, Odell number yeah. ten, um, and then our left was Robbie Brady, um, uh, Goldrick, and then we're torn between Matt Doherty and Colin Robinson. Yeah, but let us know who you'd have in the comments. Uh, would you have a completely different team? Would you have Doherty or? Um, Callum Robinson on the right hand side. I'd be interested to see who who uh, what teams people come up with. We obviously had a great debate with the with the Denmark Stanton Eleven show, and people really gave good good you know good insights as to why players should be mm-hmm. playing. So that's what that's the whole reason why we love doing these types of shows is it gives everyone a chance to have an opinion on who they would like to see. Um, ultimately. Probably not going to be the team that Mick McCarthy goes with. I'd be very, very shocked if it, if if it's even near that. I don't think a couple of players we've dropped will get dropped. But your look, uh, let us know your thoughts in the in in the comments. Uh, don't forget to check out footballfaithful.com where Peter uh, has a podcast. There. Do you want to tell actually just we're finishing up there yeah, what, no, what it the, is and the football people. faithful. We cover the Premier League, League Ireland weekly. We have a weekly podcast, so. Uh, there's loads of great football content there, so get yourself over to www.thefootballfaithful.com. We'll draw a link in the bio as well, so you can check it out um, to the social media platforms. Uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Um, don't forget to drop a like on the video as well. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll speak to you all soon. Come on, you boys in green. Come on,